is Jamie. I will be going over some of the information you will be expected to know for your first exam on protein structural organization. Protein structure is des described at four different levels, primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. We'll start with primary protein structure. To review, primary structure is the sequence of amino acids making up a polypeptide chain. It's linear. A common exam question you can expect will ask you to identify the correct sequence of a short chain of amino acids joined by peptide bonds. You could possibly be given the drawing of the polypeptide, the names of the amino acids, or the one or three letter codes of the amino acids, so you should be comfortable with all of these representations. I'll show you an example where you're given the drawing first. Okay, so just to begin analyzing this, notice that the amino terminal end of the chain is on the left, and this is the standard convention. And also notice what each peptide bond looks like. You should be able to recognize these so that you know where one amino acid residue ends and the other begins. So after that, all you need to do is I correctly identify the R groups to each amino acid, and that should be enough to get you that correct question correct. So if we look at the first one, we see this is the R group. And this represents aspartate. But remember that on the exam, it could be listed as aspartate. aspartate or by its one of its codes, so ASP or D. The second R group is the one for tyrosine, and this could also be represented by one of its codes. This one you should become very familiar with, cysteine, and it's going to be very important tertiary structure of proteins. And this last amino acid here is valine. I'm now going to go over the secondary structure of proteins, which is where we start talking about the three-dimensional structure. And there are two important secondary structural elements that you need to know, the alpha helix and the beta strand. I'm going to start by going over the alpha helix, which is the most common helix found in proteins. And this is a very simple representation of an alpha helix. Uh, it is a right-handed hel helix stabilized by hydrogen bonds that form between the carbonyl groups and the amino groups on the main chains of the residues. Now, it happens axially in between the turns, and there are 13 atoms and 3.6 residues per turn between each hydrogen bond. You also need to be familiar with the other types of helices, which are the 310 helix and the pi helix. Now there's a good chart to study in McKenna's notes from lecture 6, it's on page 6, but um, you just need to know that the 310 helix has 3 residues per turn and 10 atoms, and the pi helix has 4.4 residues per turn and 16 atoms. The second major secondary structural element you will be responsible for are the beta strands. Now the beta strands are more extended than the helices, and when they're all put together they resemble a pleated sheet. Beta strands can be anti-parallel or parallel, and the hydrogen bonds between adjacent strands are visibly different for the two of them. With anti-parallel, the strands run in opposite directions, and the hydrogen bonds are straight. Because there is less distance uh, for each hydrogen bond, this is a stronger confirmation than the parallel beta strands where each strand runs in the same direction and the hydrogen bonds are diagonal. There are also mixed beta sheets where the certain strands run parallel and others run anti-parallel. Now on an exam you should be able to answer a question where it lists or numbers the strands and then it'll say which way is strand number three going. So you should know by looking at this that three is, an, or is parallel to strand number four and strand number two, so it is going the same way. Another structural element of proteins that you should be aware of are turns. Now there are beta turns and gamma turns. Beta turns connect anti-parallel sheets of 
beta strands in a 180 degree turn. There are type 1 beta turns and type 2 beta turns, but in both types, the first and the fourth residues are hydrogen bonded to each other. Also, the two types are differentiated by the conformation of their R groups. In type 1, the R groups of amino acids 2 and 3 are cis, while in type 2, the R groups are trans. Now, for this reason, amino acid number 3 in the type 2 beta turns is always glycine. In the gamma turns, there are three residues in a 180 degree turn, and the first and the third residue are hydrogen bonded to each other. And due to the structure of gamma turns, the second amino acid is always proline. Now, be aware that these elements that we talked about do not always occur only in proteins. The proteins can consist of a mixture of helices and strands, and for some of the common motifs, I recommend checking the end of lecture six. We're now going to go over the tertiary structure of proteins, which is the entire three-dimensional structure of a protein molecule. Now understand that tertiary structure is determined by all of these non-covalent interactions, including hydrogen bonds, hydrophobic interactions, pi cation interactions, van der Waals interactions, ionic interactions, and disulfide bridges, which are formed between two cysteine amino acid residues. Also know that chaperonins are protein molecules that assist other polypeptide chains with their protein. An example of this is the GROW-EL dash GROW-EX complex. And finally, there is a quaternary uh, structure for many proteins, which is the association of multiple folded protein molecules into a functional multi-subunit complex. Now, not every protein has a quaternary structure. For example, myoglobin is one protein molecule composed of one polypeptide chain, while hemoglobin is, has four subunits. So hemoglobin is only functional when its quaternary structure is correct.